Hello everyone, welcome to our video on health screening tests where we'll introduce these tests as disease prevention methods since as increasing numbers of people are being screened and as technology continues to improve, more disease is being revealed. In this video, we'll look at different characteristics of a screening test with the most important aspect being accuracy. We'll define what this entails as well as go into some brief calculations of sensitivity versus specificity. And lastly, predictive value. First up, what are the characteristics of a good screening test? Five things we look for here, with number one being that it is simple, meaning it is easy to learn and perform. Number two being that it is rapid, meaning the test is quick to administer and results are available rapidly. Number three is that the test is inexpensive, meaning that it is good cost benefit ratio. Number four, the test should be safe to administer, meaning no harm will come to participants. And number five, the test should be acceptable to the target group. Perhaps the most important characteristic of a good screening test is its accuracy. This is also referred to as the validity of a test. This is as opposed to a test's reliability, which measures a test's precision. I'm going to pull up an image below to look at the differences between these two. In this image, we can compare and contrast different examples of reliability versus validity. So if a test is reliable or precise, this means that multiple rounds are going to yield very similar results. Whether these results be true or false, they'll all be similar in value. Whereas if a test is accurate or valid, a series of results will yield truest values or the most accurate values of that screening test. And so to sum up, accuracy is how close a measurement is to the true value, and the lack of this is referred to as bias or systematic error, whereas precision is how close the measurements are to each other and the lack of this is referred to as random error. And so in order to assess a good screening test, we have a few epidemiologic measures that we'll go through next and define, starting with sensitivity versus specificity. These both differ in that sensitivity is going to define the proportion of people with the outcome who were correctly identified. Whereas specificity, specificity is going to define the proportion of people without the outcome who were correctly identified by the screening test. And so from here we can pull up our two by two table and derive formulas for these. We're looking at the two by two table, our column is going to be people with versus without the outcome. This is from the population at hand. Typically, this is the gold standard measured against our rows, which are the screening test results. And so our first letter here, A, this is going to signify our true positives, whereas our letter D actually signifies our true negatives. And so having defined these, we can yield the formula for sensitivity to equal A, or your true positives, divided by the total of that column, your A plus C of individuals with the outcome. Whereas for specificity, this is going to equal your D, or your true negatives, divided by the total of that column, B plus D, or your total individuals without the outcome. And so from here, we can calculate our predictive values. We have two here that we'll go through and briefly define. Number one being our positive predictive value. 
This is also a proportion defined as the proportion of people who tested positive that do not have the outcome. And this is as opposed to our negative predictive value. This is defined as the proportion of people who tested negative that do not have the outcome. So again, here I'm going to pull up our two by two table. Remember, it's very important to note the difference between the columns and the rows, with the columns again signifying the outcome, whether it's positive or negative, and the rows signifying the screening test results, again, whether positive or negative. Briefly reviewing, our A values signified our true positives, whereas our D values signified our true negatives. We can now fill in our B and C values with the B signifying our false positives and the C signifying our false negatives. And now with this in mind, we can derive the formulas for the two predictive values with the positive predictive value being A or your true positives divided by the total of that row a plus B, so people who screened positive for that test result, versus negative predictive value is going to equal D, or your true negatives, divided by the total of that row, C plus D, and this is signifying the total of people who tested negative. And so now, with our two by two table being fully filled, we can additionally calculate two more measures, one being accuracy. And this is going to equal your true positives plus your true negatives, all divided over the total, which is signified by the letter N. And lastly, we can calculate prevalence which is going to be the total of your positive outcome, so that A plus C number divided by the total. So with that said, let's pull up a sample practice problem to practice these calculations. Suppose the following data below are obtained from a screening test applied to 500 people total. And so we're given our two by two table. This is already set up for us. Remember the columns signify the outcome, whether positive or negative. And the rows signify the screening test results, again, whether positive or negative, with our totals on both sides. So going through, we have six calculations, starting with sensitivity. Again, this was the proportion of people with the outcome who were correctly identified by the test. Therefore, the formula here is going to be A divided by our A plus C. This is going to equal 240 divided by 255. We'll multiply by 100 to yield 94.1%. Whereas our specificity is going to be the proportion of people without the outcome who were correctly identified by the screening test. And so this is going to be signified by D all over B plus D, according to our 2 by 2 table. So we have 220 divided by 245 multiplied by 100 to yield 89.8% is the specificity of this screening test. Remember these two values are measures of the screening test itself where we're looking at our true positives versus our true negatives. So now let's calculate our predictive values. Our positive predictive value, again, is the proportion of people who tested positive that do not have the outcome. And so the formula, again, the positive predictive value is A divided by A plus B. 
This is going to equal 240 divided by 265 multiplied by 100 to yield a 90.6% of positive predictive value. This is as opposed to our negative predictive value. Our negative predictive value, which again is the proportion of people who tested negative that do not have the outcome. And the formula here is D divided by our C plus D. Again, we're looking at the rows here. This is going to equal 220 divided by 235 multiplied by 100 to yield a 93.6% of our negative predictive value. We can also calculate prevalence here. Remember, this is going to be our total cases, A plus C, divided by our total total within the population. So in this case, 255 divided by 500 multiplied by 100 is going to yield a 51% prevalence rate in this population for this specific disease. And lastly, we can also calculate accuracy, which again is going to be our true positives plus our true negatives. So this is A plus D divided by our total total, which is going to equal 460 divided by 500 multiplied by 100 to yield a 92% accuracy of this screening test. That's pretty good here. This means this test is an effective screening tool in epidemiology. And with that said, our last slide is an overview of everything that was discussed in this video. Please subscribe below, like, and share. And for additional practice problems, please check out the Public Health Epidemiology textbook in the description of this video.